It is currently 11 degrees. We're gonna get this thing fired up here and I'll go about the warming up process. I've learned it in the past. It's called the one third method. And it really, in my opinion, is the best way to warm up a machine properly. One big thing here to note is when you do park a machine in the winter, anytime it's cold, make sure you park it in a good spot. Ideally, if you could put it in a building or out of the wind, even in a grove of pines or something, help be blocked with the wind, it helps it tremendously. But if not, try to park on a flat, solid surface. Flat so you can check all your oils properly. Just keep in mind in the winter, they're gonna be showing a little bit colder than normal, a little bit lower, but, uh, but it'll swell up. And try to park somewhere solid. Uh, if you are working in the mud, maybe try to get some tires or some logs to park on. Otherwise, the ground could potentially freeze your tracks and uh, just stick with it when you go to move or the machine will really struggle to move because it's frozen the ground. Just a couple of things to keep in mind. So right away when I turn the key on, you'll notice the glue plug symbol there and it's saying wait. It's really cold, single digits, or even a sample of 20. I'll do that twice. I'll cycle through the glue plugs twice to make sure they're especially warm. Now this machine, it's, it's reading it's cold. It's not letting me do anything until it warms up anymore. It might seem like those lights, those red lights are flashing, but they're actually not. So you want to wait at least five minutes. It's, it all depends, but anytime it's under 30 degrees, I try to wait at least five minutes. When it's even colder, I wait longer. But I keep this screen on just to monitor things. Now in a couple minutes here, this cold warning will go off and it will actually let me move the machine, but I try to let it warm up just a pinch longer just to make it easier on things. Think of it like when you've got to run a race. You don't just get up out of bed and start sprinting and running. You gotta warm up, you gotta slowly get moving, do some stretching, and it's the same procedure with the machine. Think of it the same way. You gotta get the blood flowing, to like get the hydraulics moving, get them warmed up, little by little. If you go about it too hard, too fast, you will be causing damage or possibly even breaking things. So now we're making some progress, but notice the engine's at 122, but the hydraulics are still at 46, which is, it's doable. You still want to go easy on it, because not all the fluid is the same temperature exactly. It's a good time to mention, you're running the specific oil for your machine and for your environment. That viscosity is going to matter. You want to make sure you have the right oil so it can function if it's really cold like this. The warning light is off. I'm going to take off my parking brake. First step is to get your throttle around one third. Just nice and easy. And for the one third method, you're basically exercising everything one third motion. So one third throttle to start. We're gonna lift the bucket. Just nice and easy. Go up about a third of the way. And down. Now we're gonna go up two thirds of the way. Nice and easy, not forcing it. And down, nice and easy. I can't emphasize enough here, slow and steady. Once you get up to the position where you're ready to switch and go back down, you wanna even pause for a brief second and go down easy, nice and smooth not rushing anything. It's going to take time. It can be very tempting to want to rush through this, but you want to be just going nice and smooth. I've also seen guys in the past, for example, when they're curling the bucket back, they'll curl the bucket back, say the whole way, and just hold it there. You can hear the pumps whining, the engine whining, and it's, it's really hard on things that way. You're, you're jamming it basically the whole way and it's not good for it. Guys can argue that, yeah, it's gonna warm it up faster, but that is, that is hard on everything. You wanna avoid doing that, just get all the fluids flowing, nice uniform motions, all positions. The same process can be done with an excavator, dozer, pretty much anything. But once you're done with the loader part of the warm up, you wanna start very gently moving back and forth. Just. Go a few feet, stop, 
then go a few feet the other direction, back and forth, nice and easy, just to make sure that everything is moving, getting warmed up, and broken free. Also good to get out once you get moving back and forth some, and look at everything. See for idlers, if there's evidence that they've all been moving, I know sometimes it'd be hard to tell, but if any of them are froze up, you wanna make sure that they get broken loose, whether it's with a torch or something else. Just make sure everything's spinning freely. I can tell by mine that everything's broken loose on this side. This side, everything seems okay. So by now we're pretty warm, six degrees, that's plenty warm enough to be moving and working. You can see here the needle has just started to move a little bit. It's not up to full operating temperature, so you still don't want to go slamming into a pile of dirt or anything, ease into it, but now you can at least be moving the machine, functioning it as it should be. It's still good to move it around a little bit, drive it some. So I still like to just keep my throttle not quite at 100%, just a little bit longer as I'm warming it up. I go through the motions a little bit harder now, but I'm still not ready to go into a dirt pile or anything frozen. You can see the needle is starting to move now on the hydraulic gauge, everything else looks normal. So it's almost 100%, but still, just ease into it before you go ramming into something frozen. This is called the one-third method, and hopefully it helps you guys out warming up your 